Hey guys, you ever tried and fly fishing? And today we're gonna to be tying an essential saltwater pattern. We're gonna tie the EP bait fish. To me, this thing is extremely effective, works on a multitude of species, and I will not have a box without one. Let's get started. So in the vise today, I have a Tamco 600SP tarpon hook and a one knot, and I'm just gonna use mono thread uh, mono thread is my favorite for tying saltwater patterns, and I feel it's extremely versatile. It binds down synthetics, and it also works really well for bucktail. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a very sparse chunk of EP, um, and I'm tying this in tutti fruity kind of color, which is just pink and chartreuse, pink on the bottom, chartreuse on top. Um, great attractor color. I'm grabbing my first chunk, and this is going to be on the bottom, and you can see the key to these is tying them very sparse. I always say that and I always tie them too thick. Um, it's not that they won't work, it's just I feel that the less you have on there, the easier it is to cast and the better it looks in the water. So what I'm going to do is, actually I'm just going to pinch it around my thread. Um, this first tie is kind of tricky because of the hook point. So I'm going to tie it underneath but still to the side here. One side. Oop, hit my hook point. And then the other side. So it's it's kind of like a V tie. Um, I used to tie them. Oops, that's the bummer with EP. It doesn't like to cooperate sometimes. It's fine. We're going to trim this thing out anyway. So the easiest way I've found to tie these is not in kind of a traditional high tie where you fold it back over itself, but in kind of a V and it just covers the hook shank better and it, it really is just easier to tie. Um, so you see, that'll be my final length. So this is gonna be a relatively short. Um, I'm gonna try and tie this one short and a little tall. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna advance my thread and I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing except for when I get to the shank here. Instead of wrapping around my thread, I'm just gonna wrap around my shank. Um, and I'm going to constantly rotate up and down, up and down. So right there, and you can see it's on either side of the hook. And I'm just going to wrap back over it itself. It's right about there. And it's fine if you leave a little gap between your tie-in points. You actually want to because it'll help with the density of the fly. So grab a chunk of chartreuse and do the same thing. Uh-oh, got to advance my thread first. There we go. Okay, so now pink. So, the, so basically what I'm doing is grabbing a very thin diameter, folding it over, and cutting it in half. And then when I hit my next tie-in section, I'm going to cut it in half again. So that way it reduces your waste when you trim this thing out. And on the hook point. Okay. So there's that. Pull it back. That's your thread. So green or chartreuse. And I'm constantly checking to, because this is such a slippery material and it tends to roll on the hook, I'm constantly checking that, you know, it's even on both sides, which, you know, it just has to be relatively even. You can see that chunk cut away from me. Um, I think that was the hardest thing I had to learn with this pattern because both the material itself and thread is slippery. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another chunk of pink and when I do this, I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut it in half again. Uh, you could also kind of, one thing I do is taper it so I don't have squared off ends. So I'm going to rotate that around. You can see that's much shorter. Bring it under, create my little V tie. And then I'm going to grab my chartreuse and do the same thing. And then tie it in. Well, bring my thread up. And back 
icon itself. Okay, let's grab my other pink that I have pre-cut. I think the key with tying these things quickly, if that's what you want to do, is to have all of your EP cut and prepped. Um, for me, I only do that when I need them, need them. Um, I just enjoy tying them and watching, you know, what kind of evolves out of this. So I'm not trying to production tie them, except for when I need them. But the thing that really speeds up my tying is prep. So I don't have to constantly cut and measure. If you want, you can kind of just kind of spread out the fibers just a little bit so you don't get a gap right here. Just gonna brush it back and check what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more tie of pink in the way that I've been doing it, and one more tie of chartreuse, and then I'm gonna change up how I'm gonna tie in my last tie. Okay, so that's in there. So for my last tie, I'm gonna take those pieces that I've cut and folded, cut and folded, cut and folded, and I'm gonna cut them again. So you should have two really short pieces that are dense because you're always constantly folding them. They should be, I think four times as dense now <laughs> and four times as short. So you can see that's a relatively short piece. I'm gonna tie it in. I'm gonna tie it in here and I'm gonna spread it around the top top of the hook shank. Um, sometimes you need to untwist your thread there. Okay, so that's spread relatively even. I'm gonna do the same thing with my pink. Um, rotate the hook. Oop, I should throw another wrap on that before I rotate it. And spread it. You see what I'm doing there? Just making sure it's evenly distributed, pinch wrapping it on, spread that out. And make sure we're all the way around. You can kind of pull this stuff. Okay, so come back a little bit. And then I'm gonna reverse tie these. Make sure they're spread out. Okay, wrap back over them and tie them down. Um, this is why I like to use mono thread too, so I don't have a big thread bump or color here. With the mono, it's just, you know, what it looks like there, it's clear and see-through. So, I'm gonna whip finish. And then I'm gonna trim this. Um, you can see it looks pretty good. Uh, it's because, you know, we pre-cut and pre-tapered our pieces, but I'm just going to trim it a little more. You can see there's some that are long. So, you know, I like to trim these things pretty slowly. Um, trimming is kind of where I end up messing them up. Okay. And your goal should just be to create a bait fish profile, whatever bait fish you're trying to emulate. So I'm going to flip it over, do the same thing. I'm actually going to take it out for the bottom so I can get around that hook. And this is also where I struggle tying these. Just going to fluff them out. You can comb them out too. Um, I find sometimes that helps. But for this one, I'm just going to trim my hand without combing. So I'm always constantly brushing it back and checking my taper. I want to go as slowly as I can because you can very easily take too much off. So I'm going to continue this cut. Match it top and bottom the best you can. And this is where I struggle too, is right under the hook. So, and they don't have to be perfect. You know, obviously do the best you can. What I will say too, if 
the easiest thing to do starting out is to get a get a piece of paper with a trimming guide on it and then you can lay it up against it and get the shape you're really trying to get so right here what i'm doing is rounding off that initial cut so that i don't get a square cut so it looks pretty good um, another thing i like to do is come in here and kind of round this off too because you'll, you'll get square um, you can also kind of because i tied this more 3d with the v you can kind of come in here and create like a v profile in the bait fish itself like bait fish will taper down to the belly here and you can you can add that in and also any anything errant you can kind of get rid of uh, you can see it's still a little square tail needs a little trim there and that's good enough for now um, sometimes I tie these stick them on my desk and trim them you know over a couple you know tr I'll tie a couple trim one go back trim the other it's kind of a process okay the next thing I got in the vise I'm just gonna stick some stick on eyes here and I'm using my favorite eyes which is the fish fish skull living eyes and I have them in a large size. They're eight and a half mil in the fire color. So my goal here is to get my eye right about there. And I want to get it on there and match it to the other side. So the way I like to do this is to put the glue on the eye itself. Um, you can use gel glue, super glue. Um, I just like standard super glue. Um, and I'm going to try not to glue my fingers down. Oop, there it is. And my goal, too, should also be to glue this eye, and this one didn't go all the way, to the shank of the hook. So sometimes, and I may do it here, you may want to, I'll rotate it so you can see, take a little bit out of here so you can get to the hook shank. Um, this one I'm going to also reinforce with UV resin. So, it's not as imperative that I get it on there fully with the super glue because I'll reinforce it later. Um, so, I'm going to check where my eye was on the other side. Like I said, I'm going to really try to match those up. Just use my scissors so I don't glue my fingers. Okay, it's pretty good, pretty even. Um, you may want to re trim some of this when you. Uh, when you put your eyes on just because it can change the shape here and I'm gonna fill this in with epoxy anyway so I kind of want that clear er if you see too I'm using my um, hook eye as a guide and that's one thing I found where I won't over trim and dig into it so I'm just going to grab uh, UV epoxy, and I have Loon in a thick. I, I like Loon. One, I like Loon products because they're non-toxic. But this doesn't smell. And I don't know if the smell is a factor um, for fish. The smell eventually goes away, but this really doesn't have a, a smell to it when it starts out. So I like it better. And basically, I'm just covering my thread wraps and then working it in between the eyes here. I'm just going to create um, like a little mask with the glue. And then one thing I like to do too is get it on the eye and then kind of bring it around the eye so that eye does not go anywhere. Just reinforce that and just, you know, nice and slow and steady. Okay, I'm going to let that settle just a little bit, um, move anything out of the way that doesn't need to be there, and then I'm going to hit it with my light. It's nice and slow. And this is the great thing about a rotary vise too, is that you could just rotate this thing right around and cure it 360. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, very, very effective, easy pattern. Um, one of the reasons I like it is you can trim the shape to whatever shape, whatever prevalent bait fish you have. Um, also feel free to mark this up 
with some markers, you know, adding gills, change up the colors, and that's it. That's an EP bait fish. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos, and we'll see you next time.